Thanks for tuning in. You're watching Lord Fuzzman, and this video is about offset guitar bridges. Now, if you're a member of any forum to do with offset guitars, jazz masters and jaguars, etc., this subject has been debated to death. So in this video, we're going to be comparing the new Fender RSD bridge, which is found on a lot of new custom shop uh, jazz masters and jaguars, the Stay Trem, the Mastery, the Mustang style bridge, the Vintage style bridge, and the relatively newcomer, the Halon Bridge. Um, so we're going to put these through the paces. Now, the main reason I'm doing this video is time and time again, I see people commenting that they've upgraded their bridge and what a major difference to the tone it made and uh, sustain and all those sorts of things. And I'm a bit dubious as to whether the bridge actually makes any difference there. So we're going to put them side by side and do some demonstrations and then you can make your mind up whether they make any difference and we'll also go through some of the advantages the pros and cons of each of those bridges now i just wanted to say from the start the bridge that came with your guitar should work perfectly fine if your guitar is set up properly for it and we'll talk more about setup shortly now let's look at leo fender's original design for the jazz master and jaguar bridge now the name is a dead giveaway but fender were clearly targeting the jazz guitarists when they came up with the jazz master and the jaguar now, if we look at some of the early jazz guitars, we can see that they've all got something in common, a relatively high bridge and a sharp break angle between the bridge and the tailpiece. Now, this break angle assists with resonance and sustain, and it provides downward pressure on the strings so that they sit firmly in place. Now, back in the day, your average jazz guitarist didn't have any problems with a jazz master. He'd be playing fairly soft compared to today's standards, and he'd be using thicker gauge strings. Now, as time moves on, guitarists start using thinner gauge strings and start playing harder than ever before. Now, one of the first problems they encounter is the strings sliding over the grooves in the bridge saddles. And this picture is actually a promo pic from Fender showing the Player Series Jazzmaster. And what you can see here is that someone has hit the low E string, knocking it off the center of the saddle. And this is very easy to do on a vintage style bridge because the grooves are very small and they're not big enough to keep the string in the right position on the saddle. And it's this, together with string buzz and intonation problems, that cause people to upgrade their bridge to a better design. Now, before you swap out your vintage style bridge, there are actually two things you could do that might remedy the situation. The first is to shim the neck, which simply means taking off the neck and putting a thin card or a slither of wood at the base of the neck pocket. The effect of this is that the neck tilts backwards, causing you to raise the bridge to set the correct string height and thus increasing string tension on that bridge, just like those old jazz guitars. The other option is to install a bus stop behind the bridge, which forces the strings down and increases that break angle. Now, the first time I became aware of these being used was on Robert Smith's early Jazz Masters, where he fashioned a bus stop out of a piece of old brass tubing. And as you can see, I've managed to replicate that guitar right here. A bus stop is also used to good effect by the singer of the band Metz. He plays the hell out of that jazz master and has zero issues with the vintage style bridge. Now, before we get onto those back-to-back -back sound comparisons of each bridge, I'm going to talk you through the pros and cons of using each one on your guitar. But if you decide you want to skip straight to those audio samples, there'll be a guide in the description below. Now, I just want to put in a little disclaimer here. Firstly, I haven't used every bridge out there. Uh, I'm fully aware there's no adjustomatic style or tunomatic style bridge in this video. The reason for that, even though I do use them on some of my guitars, is that I wanted to use the same guitar in each demo and I couldn't fit that onto uh, this particular custom shop um, Jazzmaster. Uh, secondly, I'm going to make some positive and negative comments about these bridges. Um, these are just my personal opinion. I appreciate that if you've spent a whole load of money on a bridge and then I go and say something negative about it, you're not going to feel too good. But hey, it's just my opinion and it's what you think that really matters. Okay, now let's get on to the pros and cons of the vintage style bridge. Now this design has been in use for pretty much 62 years now, so uh, you could say it's a little outdated, but it is what Leo Fender intended to use on the Jazzmaster. And as I said before, if your guitar is set up well, it works absolutely fine. Now they're great value for money, you can pick them up anywhere. They've got individual saddle height adjustments, so you can set the intonation and the radius perfectly. And it is a rocking bridge, so it will move forwards and backwards when you use your trem. And this design is said to assist with intonation and tuning. 
So what do I think is wrong with this bridge? Well, we've already talked about the grooves on the saddles that allow the strings to move out of place. And it's a common occurrence with these bridges for screws to come loose, which might cause rattles and buzzing. Uh, and I have to say the modern Squire version of this bridge or the replacements that you can buy on the internet aren't built as good as the earlier ones, which mainly boils down to the quality of the metal that's used these days. Now the next bridge in this comparison is known as the Mustang style bridge and these were named so because they were first seen on the vintage Fender Mustang. Now the immediate improvement with these was that the deeper groove in the saddle avoided string slippage and if you could find one that matched your neck radius you were safe in the knowledge that that radius was set perfectly for life and not only that because there are no screws poking up the top from each saddle it was much more comfortable on the hand. So in terms of negatives most of the Mustang bridges you'll find out there are made of poor quality materials and the bridge height adjustment screws tend to rattle loose and you may find some unwanted rattles and noises from this bridge. And in no particular order, we now move on to what is arguably the most sought after bridge in the offset guitar market, the Mastery. It's obvious from the first look that a lot of thought went into the design of this bridge. And when you get your hands on one, you can feel that it's really well put together and made from high quality materials. The saddles here are actually made of brass, but plated in hard chrome to make them more durable. The deep saddle string grooves on this bridge ensure that the strings will never pop out during a performance and they're slightly fanned out at each end. The grooves are so big that this bridge can even be used on a bass six guitar. What appears to be the main design focus for Mastery is transferring that string energy to the body. All Mastery bridges are non-rocking, providing much more physical contact than a traditional rocking bridge. And this is achieved by having a thicker bridge post which sits really tight in that thimble. The Mastery is also set to give you 52mm string spacing and this ensures that your E strings don't fall off the side of the fretboard. Now the last thing that you'll get with a Mastery is that fuzzy warm feeling inside knowing that you're using some of the same gear as your favourite guitar heroes. Now hold your horses, this thing is expensive. You're looking at $175 to $190, depending on which version you go for. And if you own a Mastery, chances are you probably own a bottle of Loctite glue too. These things are notorious for the bridge posts rattling loose and then having to be glued tight, which when you're spending this sort of money is just not on in my opinion. Some other points that personally for me I would consider a negative is that there's no individual saddle adjustment. With the Mastery you've effectively got two screws controlling the intonation of three strings. So I don't believe you can get quite the fine tuning that you can get on some of the other bridges. Another common complaint of the Mastery is that it just doesn't look right with a vintage guitar. This thing looks like it's from the future and is much more suited in my opinion to a modern guitar. We also mentioned earlier that this is a non-rocking bridge, but for this sort of money it would be nice to have that option because a lot of people do prefer it. My final thought on the Mastery, and probably the first thing that I noticed when I started using one, is how uncomfortable it was. Now I regularly palm you when I play guitar, and I noticed the sharp saddles were digging into the palm of my hand. Now just as a little visual demonstration, if I compare the Mastery to a stay trem and simply rub those saddles, along a piece of polystyrene, you can begin to see how this might feel at the end of a show, particularly if you're an aggressive player. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at Fender's RSD bridge. Now at the moment, this bridge is only available on Fender Custom Shop guitars, which is a real shame in my opinion, because it is a fantastic bridge. The build quality is really good, it's, it just feels great in the hands. It comes with a fixed radius, so there's no messing around with saddle heights on this. It's really comfortable on the hand. You hardly feel it at all. I love the design. It looks great with vintage guitars. Um, although it's a new design, I think it really complements the look of any Jazzmaster or Jaguar, um, and it just seems really stable. Throughout my time with this guitar, I've had zero issues with this bridge. No unpleasant noises, rattles, it just works. And it also has that all important 52 millimeter string spacing, unlike some other bridges out there. Now there's not really a lot of bad things you can say about this bridge, apart from the obvious. It's only available on custom shop guitars. Now if only they would make this available to the public to be able to mod their own guitars, they would sell thousands upon thousands. But I'm guessing that Fender won't do that because it makes their custom shop guitars more exclusive and more desirable. And the only other things I could say if I was being picky 
Like the Mastery, these are compensated saddles, so they don't have individual intonation adjustment, which I would prefer. But having said that, the intonation on this RSD bridge was perfect. And finally, just like the Mastery, this is a fixed bridge and there's no rocking option. Okay, we're now going to move on to the Statrem bridge. Now, I've been using these bridges for over 10 years now, and I can hand on my heart say I have never had a problem with this bridge. Now these cost £70 in the UK and that's really good value for money, especially when you consider that that's half the price of a mastery. In my opinion, this bridge is just an example of simple engineering that solves all the problems. It's made from high quality stainless steel. It comes in a set radius of 7.25 or 9.5, meaning that the radius is set perfectly and there are no adjustment screws on the barrel shaped saddles to cause discomfort. And talking of saddles, you've got deep grooves, so no string slippage and that perfect 52mm string spacing. Now with the Stay Trem, you can order a rocking or non-rocking bridge, depending on which you prefer. And the bridge posts have a special plastic bushing, so they won't come loose or rattle and there's no need for Loctite glue. Each saddle also has a special retaining disc, so there's no springs on this bridge, which can cause rattles and unwanted overtones. And to top it all, the Statrem's subtle looks won't detract from your vintage pride and joy. Now the only major drawback about Statrem is that they will not ship outside of the UK. Statrem appears to be a one-man show, and I think over the last few years they became so popular that the amount he could produce just simply couldn't meet up with demand. So unfortunately if you're not in the UK, it's very difficult to get a Statrem. The only other possible downside that I can think of with this bridge is if you don't have the regular 7.25 or 9.5 radius on your neck and you want something different, then you're going to have to find a different bridge. As with some of the other bridges, you can adjust it to that radius at any time. Now this could apply to some of the new aluminium necks which people are putting on their offset guitars which tend to have a flatter radius. Okay, now last but certainly not least, we have the Halon Bridge. Now the Halon Bridges are handmade in Greece over here in Europe and these guys really know their stuff. You can pretty much customise your bridge to whatever spec you're looking for. Now Halon pride themselves on the fact that they individually make each bridge using a machine mill rather than a press. And this allows them to use higher quality metal alloys and produce a bridge with a thicker base plate. So just to put that in perspective, the Mastery uses 304 steel, which is probably the most common out there. Whereas the Halon uses 1060 stainless steel, which is something you'd find in a high quality sword. And it's this attention to detail that really sets them above the rest. Now, as I said earlier, the guys at Halon are happy to talk to you about your needs. If you want that airy, woody tone, they'll sort you out a 7075 aluminium bridge. If you're after that beefy, sweet tone, it'll be the MS58 brass that you need. I also hear they're working on a special phosphor bronze alloy, which is said to give you somewhere between the sweet tones of brass and the wider harmonic content of stainless steel. And the options don't stop there. You've got a choice of four saddles, brass, aluminium, 1060 stainless steel, and now titanium. And if you want to keep your original vintage fender bridge, they offer high quality replacement saddles that look just the part. The Halon bridges come in either 52 or 55 millimeter string spacing, depending on your preference. And just like the Mastery, we have three compensated saddles. But if you're old fashioned and play with a wound G string, you're able to flip the middle saddle over, which is designed to perfectly intonate a wound G-string. The Halon also comes with two different size saddle screws. So if you've ever played a guitar and felt those screws digging into your palm from the bridge, you're able to swap those out for the smaller screws and you'd never know they were there. Now in terms of negatives, there's not really a lot to say. However, this bridge is expensive and it's priced somewhere similar to a Mastery, but Halon will justify that price because they're using higher end components and they clearly have more options available. Okay, now I've talked long enough. The proof is in the pudding. Does having a different bridge on your guitar affect the tone through the pickups? <laughs>
Okay, that's all folks. Thanks for watching this video. If you got anything useful from it, please hit like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments below.